Hello, so this might be my first Milsurp unboxing video, I'm not quite sure. Actually you no, know, I've definitely done unboxing before, just not very often. So what I believe is in here is a Chinese Type 75 Geiger counter, but Hype, who I bought it through, said why don't I open it, you know, on video, considering it's, you know, an old bit of Milsurp. So it's in a sealed plastic bag, so let's first cut open this bag. And then we should be able to get at the paper parcel inside. So I'll put the scissors down a moment because that should be a big enough cut. Oh, actually, I don't know if that's even exposed it. No, it hasn't. Right. Looks like I'm going to have to cut this low down to actually get into it because it looks like it's stuck there. So Chinese Type 75 Geiger counters. Pretty interesting. It's non-linear as in a logarithmic scale or however it's pronounced. Um, sort of Geiger unit. I think mostly for gamma radiation. Designed to go from, I think it was less than one Rontgen up to 200 Rontgen. Um, and what might be very interesting is this could potentially have a Cobalt 60 check source inside it. It's probably a Strontium 90 one though. Um, but yeah, there's, so there's the parcel here. Let's open it up. Ooh, and a lovely leather carry pouch. So, oh, that's excellent. Oh, and a little red book. So I've got my own Chinese little red book now, but it's not a Chairman Mao one. So 75 Chinese writing, and yeah, no, that's cool. So yeah, there's a little, it is literally a little red book. They've glued a photo in, that's nice, of the unit. And is there a bit of info on here about check sources? Um, by the look of it, yes, but again, because lots of Chinese text in here, I'm not going to bother looking through it right now. So let's look at this nice carry pouch, obviously designed to go on your belt. Uh, but yeah, this is actually a really well-made carry pouch. Now, something to point out about China, because a lot of people don't get this, is Chinese military PLA, as in People's Liberation Army stuff, is generally very good quality. Not always, but generally. So when you people talk about Chinese junk, just because there's lots of, you know, crap Chinese goods made for consumer markets in the West, doesn't mean that lots of Chinese military stuff is bad. So I thought I'd just get that out of the way with before somebody goes, oh, it can't be a good Geiger counter because it's made in China. Oh, so this is also nice. Flaps open, and you've got the unit display. Um, you've obviously got an on-off switch, I think that's the check source button there, and another switch there. So let's pull this out of its leather carry case. There we go. Oh, and it's got some sort of strange floral design in there. That's nice. I don't know why there's a blossom design in there, but whatever. <laughs> so, okay, so here's the unit. So, I guess this is the battery cover here. Let's open that and see. There we go, yep, so that's the battery cover for, I assume, either one or two D-cells. I did bring a D-cell through with me, so I will check. Yep, that's just going to be a one D-cell. So we figured out what that is, that's good. So at least Communist China used um, proper batteries, unlike the Soviet Union and a few other nations. Britain included <laughs> in those list of weird um, nations obsessed with obsolete batteries that didn't work. Okay, so there we go, let's tighten that back up. Okay, that's that. So I assume this is the on-off switch. Ah, oh, yeah, that's what that's going to indicate. So that is going to be on. Now, sure, that's the check source button. Yep, there we go, because the needle is rising ever so slightly. So half a Rontgen per hour, but it's still going up, I think. I think it's stabilising on 0 0.5 Rontgen per hour. So yeah, as I said, non-linear scale. So if you look at that, and it glows in the dark too, look at that, isn't that cool? Um, as you can see, if the camera wants to focus on it, the dial goes up to 200 Rontgen, but it's non-linear. I really like dials like this. Obviously, the dilemma before you had digital units like this is you had the issue of, do you want a dial with a massive load of more complex circuitry in where you've got a selector switch, where you had more or less resistance to a circuit, you know, to go from like 0 to 5, 0 to 50, 0 to 500, that kind of thing. Or do you want a non-linear scale, which means it will have to be crammed into one scale, but, you know, there's that. So, that's the circuit check. So, how this one works, it's stopping a bit beyond where it should be, or it might just be a battery check. But, as you can see, that's stopping on about 75 Rontgen, where it should be um, stopping, I guess, um, at the sort of 20 mark. But I do like the fact that, pressing this, it appears there's still enough activity inside this to get past half a Rontgen per hour. So this check source is going to be very interesting. So I'll open this unit up in a minute so we can have a look. So it's both a back cover and a cover here. Now I don't know if the cover here is just simply a battery thing, so we'll leave that on for now and we'll open this cover in a moment. But 
the needle is pretty much on zero. I imagine that's a zero just there. So in a moment I'm going to get a screwdriver, see if I can get that slightly more on zero in there. Uh, and then we'll open it up. But yeah, it's a nice little green unit. But what I want to do first is, let's see, we'll put the audio on the therapy. Um, is there radiation being emitted from this? Yep, sounds like it. So um, this might even be a Cobalt 60 check source, because if you see a big solid metal block like this, I doubt that'd be strontium coming out there. So it could even be a Cobalt check source. So yeah, let's open this guy up and see what's in it. I'll do some of this off camera just so I'm not fiddling about with a screwdriver on camera for ages. Right, we should be ready for the next area of the video. So this should now prise off with a very satisfying noise. There we go, because of the O-ring. And here is the circuitry inside. So let's have a look at what's where. So that exposes the check source look. So you do that there, and then the shielded bit of the check source opens. Now, is that strontium-90 or cobalt? I can't tell at the moment, but it's a pretty beefy source, whatever it is, because of how much it moves the meter. So there's the Geiger Muller tube. And you can see it's not even point blank into that Geiger Muller tube um, there. Still a bit of a distance. So yeah, there's your GM tube there. Um, pretty similar looking GM tube actually to the old um, Soviet ones in the um, Model 63A, whatever it's called. DP63A. Um, so yeah, there's some bits of silver sort of circuitry in there, but yeah. The bits you'll be interested in is basically, that's your check source there, that's your Geiger Muller tube there. All the rest of it is pretty simple. So, now what I want to do is put the therapy right up to this and see what sort of reading we get. Let's put the audio back on. So obviously this is the check source there. Oh, let's hold the button down that it exposes it. Oh, that's pretty active. I reckon that might be Cobalt saying that. Because, yeah, look at the reading, even with the therapy's cover closed. Fifteen? Fourteen? Yeah, bloody hell. I don't think this is Strontium-90. Twenty-two, I think this might be Cobalt. I'm very, very tempted to take this out now. Um, so, you've seen the Geiger counter working, and indeed it does appear to work. I'm just going to get my radium check source now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that blank against the tube to see if we can see a needle move. But bear in mind, because this is in the Rontgen range, not milli Rontgens, as much as the first part of the scale is milli Rontgen, I don't know how well that bit's going to work, but let's see what happens. Okay, so, my current favourite check source, the radium scale from the DP63A gives out nearly a combined one Rontgen per hour of beta and gamma. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to hold this up here so you can see the scale. Then I'm going to put this flush against the GM tube. Right, and what happens? Let's see. Is the needle moving? Let me move it away again. Put it back there again. It might be causing a tiny bit of needle movement, but as said, as strong a source of radiation as this is, if this is a tube mostly literally designed for um, gamma rays only, which I imagine it is, this isn't going to move it all that much, even with the sheer amount of energy it can give out. So the zeroing screw is under there. So I'm just going to stop the video now. I'm going to get my screwdriver set out. I'm going to re-zero this and then take the check source out which I hope will be an easy enough thing to do. I'm hoping the check source, I can literally move those two screws and get it out. And then we're going to see if we can identify what this spicy check source is, because yeah, if you can make the needle move like that at that distance, um, it's probably something very, very hot in there. So I am uh, very, very uh, interested in seeing what's in here. Wow, this was super easy to remove. You literally undid two screws and some screws and washers came out and here it is. So here's the check source, it's in here. So how this works normally, I guess, is you have your, um, when the button is pressed, it's got this bit on the spring and it just swings this off of the check source. So here is the check source. Doesn't look all that interesting, does it, to the camera? But this is quite spicy. So let's um, get this check source fully exposed. 
Uh, I hope there's just an easy way of pulling the check saucer out of this bit of metal, but I think that's riveted on, so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get this out. But yeah, the check source obviously is sandwiched between these two bits. But anyway, let's put the therapies audio back on, and let's just put this on top of this casing. See what it does. So yeah, even when it's in here, it's making a bit of energy come out. Let's now um, see if we can flip open this and hold this open. There we go. And then we'll take the beta screen off in a moment and see how high the reading goes. So that's about 44, 53 microsieverts. 54. That's just doing that. Right, now let's open this up. And let's pull back the thing again and do this. Oh, that was an interesting sound. Well, we're looking at at least two millisieverts here. Two, 2.8 millisieverts would be, three millisieverts would be about 300 milli Ronken. So if this gets to 500 millisieverts, this will be giving a similar energy. It could just be a really hot bit of strontium-90. And then what could be happening is it could be creating X-rays through Brackenstrahlung or whatever it's called from the strontium-90 slamming into um, here. What I'm going to do before I end the video is just basically put the Geiger counter back together. Although I think I will leave this bit out and keep it as a check source. Um, and yeah, I've got a working Chinese uh, Geiger counter. I've, I know I've got the other one, I've still not got around to doing a proper video on. Yeah, the Type 75 is indeed very cool. Um, yeah, so for those of you wondering about mechanics, what would happen is when you normally press the um, bit there, it just pushes that bit that opens the check source. But what I'm just going to try and do now is see if I can find a way without damaging the casing, getting that check source out of that little bit, and identifying what it is. I think it may just be a really, really hot bit of strontium-90, which is creating X-rays, behave the same as gamma rays through Brackenstall and whatever it's called, breaking radiation. Well, because they're slamming into that cover and then turning into x-rays, but let me try and get this bit of metal open and then we'll see if we can ID the isotope. Now the check source is exposed, I almost shudder to pick it out of my hands, it's beautifully big, I think it's just a massive chunk of strontium-90. So let's put the audio back on this, we'll have the beta tube exposed. Now, look at this thing, this is the check source. Whether or not I'm going to get beta burns on my skin, I don't know, but look at it, it is huge. Now. <laughs> oh dear. Look at that. <sighs> Nearly one wrong gun. Oh, it's, it's overloaded the tube again, just like... <laughs> oh, I, I'm enjoying this too much. Right, there we go. And if you want to see what that would look like on a cumulative dose, every number on the side is a um, 10 microsievert dose. Fucking hell. Wow. Is it that radioactive both sides around as well? Let's have a look. So if we go back onto dose rate. It's not as radioactive that side. So yeah, it's definitely a beta source. So the check source is the bit in the middle of here. By guessing it's a taller bit, but yeah. There you go. So, um, it's a bit bad I'm doing this without my glasses on, because of course if a beta ray hits me in the eye, that's pretty dangerous. But yes, uh, let's go on to the beta flux uh, density option, because that's... Yeah, let's just put my finger over there, because the alarm's going to sound. Hmm, pretty fascinating, isn't it? So yeah, what we have here is, I would assume, a massive bit of strontium-90. So if I put the back plate back on the therapy. I think what we'll be seeing oh beta shouldn't get into the therapy that easily I think it's just the little gaps in the plate it's getting through but yeah I'm pretty sure this is a massive chunk of strontium 90 but there we go uh, probably the hottest radionuclide I now own this particular bit of strontium-90. Now, what I could do uh, is try and measure this with other Geigers, but I don't think I've got a Geiger that can measure over one Rongen of beta uh, radiation, so that Chinese tube's pretty impressive for that, actually. But yeah, 
This this is the joyous gift that has come from the Type 75. My hottest bit of Strontium 90 that I'm going to put down now before my hands start looking like I've been in Chernobyl. But yeah, there you go. Chinese um, Type 75 Geiger has a lovely green backlight on it. Um, and yeah, this will only measure actual radiation from the outside now, as in gamma rays, but what a lovely unit. So thank you Hype for setting me up with one of these. I don't know if he's got more available for people who want to buy them. But it will come all in its original thing with a lovely red book and a lovely leather carry case which has a floral pattern on inside for some reason and dangerously high radionuclide contents. So I was just looking at the document to see if there was a mention of SR90. So I'm pretty sure it's SR90 not Cobalt 60 but I'm not that disappointed because it's such a lovely massive bit of strontium. Oh look, a schematic diagram as well. Isn't this a lovely little booklet? Ah, now I reckon this is the stuff. Does it have in here Uh, no, that might be used to be a parts list, actually, this one. Never mind. Um, I was wondering in here, because on a lot of these they have, you know, what the activity was last time it was checked, but it doesn't matter. The point is that if you get one of these, you get a lovely old Geiger unit that can certainly measure gamma radiation, and it seems it measures beta internally, but this is obviously designed to measure gamma. It's fairly heavy and chunky, but it's got a lovely range on it. I don't know why I'm bothering pressing that button there, it's not going to do anything. And yes, the main the main thing to learn is it comes with a bit of strontium-90 in it, so big um, it can actually cause skin burns if you hold it for too long. So there we go. Chinese Type 75 Geiger, what a lovely piece of old communist tech.